Hello, today we're going to talk about structure 3.2.6, which is all about structural isomers. Okay, so structural isomers have the same molecular formula, but different structures. Their, their atoms are connected in a different way. So that means if you have something like a butane, which is like this, I'm going to draw it in a straight line to make it easier for us to see. So this is butane, and butane's molecular formula is C4H10. Now you can have another molecule that's C4H10. I can connect the carbons in a different way like this. And I fill in with hydrogens. It's still 10 hydrogens. There we go. Um, so this is butane. This one is actually 2-methylpropane because the main chain is three carbons and it has a single carbon off the second spot. So those are structural isomers. They have the same molecular formula, but they're connected differently. Um, the way that I like to imagine it, and this is a good strategy, is if you were to take one of the carbons on the end of a chain and swap it or someplace in the middle, swap it with one of the hydrogens in the middle of the chain, then that's going to create a new structural isomer. If I were to swap it with one of the hydrogens on an end carbon, instead it would give you the same molecule. It might be bent, but it'll still be the same molecule. So you have to swap it with a hydrogen on a central carbon there of whatever's left over when you take it out. And so those are the two structural isomers for butane. And the longer the chain, the more possible structural isomers you have. Now, you should be careful with um, straight chain versus branched isomers. Um, I'm going to use a skeletal structure. So that's butane versus 2-methylpropane. Because butane has this kind of straight chain structure, it is easier for it to stack like this. And because it can kind of line up better, the electrons in the electron cloud are able to affect each other more efficiently, if that makes sense. Um, so what that means is that they become more polarizable. You wind up with the electrons more likely to be on one side versus the other and leaving a partial positive on the other side. And when they line up like that, it can create an induced dipole moment and create those London dispersion forces. So these straight chain molecules have stronger London dispersion forces because they're more polarizable and that gives them higher melting points and higher boiling points and lower volatility. Volatile. Let's see. There we go. The um, branched chain ones can't line up as well. They also have a more even distribution in their electron cloud, which makes them less polarizable. And because of that, they have weaker London dispersion forces, less polarizable, and that gives them lower melting points and lower boiling points and higher volatility compared to their straight chain structural isomer. Now alkenes and alkynes can also have structural isomers, um, but they tend to be more what we call positional isomers. So if I have something like um, like this, this would be um, butuanine. And I just assume that the hydrogens are filled in there. Um, you, or you could have the double bond in the second position which would be butetuene. So those are called positional isomers because the position of the double bond is changing. And you can do the same thing with a triple bond. Um, you could also have, um, so let me fill in my hydrogens actually really quick so you can see something. There would be two hydrogens there, one here, two here, and three here. So butuanine is C4H8, right? You can also have another type of isomer for um, double bonds in 
rings. So if you form a cyclobutane, then each of these carbons needs two more hydrogens. To fill up their octet. And so that gives this cyclobutane C4H8 as well, cyclobutane. And so all of these are isomers of each other, but this one is a um, not considered a positional isomer because it has a totally different structure. Butuanine and butuene are both positional isomers because the only difference is the position of that double bond. Um, and the same thing can be true for um, triple bonds. Um, one triple bond is equivalent to like two rings. Um, or you could change a triple bond into a double bond and a ring. So it just depending on the structure, you can get um, kind of creative with the different types of structural formulas available. You can also have positional isomers for um, certain functional groups. And um, you can have something like, let's do a halogenoalkane if I have chlorine. Um, in that second position, this would be 2-chlorobutane. Uh, or you could have the chlorine in an end position, and it would be 1-chlorobutane. But it would still have the same molecular formula. <clears throat> you could do the same thing with this, um, some of the other functional groups, like alcohols. Um, like that. This would be butin 2-all uh, versus on the end, this would be butin 1-all. And in this case, because the um, hydroxyl group is on this end carbon and it only has one carbon attached to it, this is a primary alcohol. And um, in the case of butin 2-all, this um, would be a secondary alcohol. You could even have like this. Um, this would be 2-methyl-propen-2-all, <laughs> which is also a structural isomer of the other two, but it would not be considered a positional isomer. Um, positional isomers differ only by the position of that functional group, um, but this one would also be another type of structural isomer. Um, and this one would give us a tertiary alcohol because that center carbon has three other carbons attached to it. You can also have structural isomers that change the type of functional group. So let's say I have a primary alcohol like this. We'll keep it small. This is just ethanol. And so it would be C2H6O. I can also make an ether out of this. Which would be um, methoxymethane. And it still has the formula C2H6O. But it's going to have very different chemical properties and physical properties because it doesn't have the hydroxyl group anymore. It has this ether uh, functional group um, or an alkoxy functional group, really. So depending on the type of functional group present, you're going to have um, very, very different properties um, in both chemical reactions and like melting point, boiling point volatility. They still have the same molecular formula. So it's very important for us to be looking at the structural formula and the functional group present. One last example of a um, structural formula, uh, structural isomer that I want to give you guys is a substituted benzene. We're talking about benzene a couple of times. Um, benzene is a little special because it has six carbons in a ring, and each carbon has just one hydrogen leaving it with six pi electrons that are free to move around the entire ring. So most of the time you're going to see it just as a skeletal drawing like this with the assumed hydrogens on each. But you can substitute the hydrogens for other things. So um, let's say I have something like uh, 
I have like a chlorine on one and a hydroxyl group on the other. So that would be one isomer. You could also put them in different positions. So you could put like a chlorine here and a hydroxyl group there. You could also put like a chlorine here and the hydroxyl group opposite to it. And so this would have three different structural isomers. If I were to put it on this side, it's the same as this one. It's just kind of flipped over in space. Or if I changed it here, it'd be the same as the first isomer just flipped around. So really there's only going to be three possibilities where they're next to each other, where they have one carbon away, or where they're on opposite sides from each other. There are specific names for these different isomers and there's naming conventions for it. You don't need to know that for the IB exam, um, but just kind of have an idea that uh, you can place these different things on different positions around the benzene ring and that makes them structural isomers. So let's look at a couple examples here. Um, pentine contains a triple bond. Draw two positional isomers of pentine and then draw a third one that is not a positional isomer of the one we already drew. So pent is five carbons, and I means there's a triple bond. I'm going to stick it here. And then you would assume that it would you'd fill in the hydrogens. So this would be pent two ine, because one, two, three, pent two ine. I need to draw a different one. Um, I could put one on the end between the first and second carbon. That would be uh, pent one ion. Those would be positional isomers. Um, if I were to, here's my pentane again. If I were to put the triple bond here instead, I would have to start numbering from the other end of the chain. So this would be a one, two, three, because you always number from the end closest to the functional group. And so this would still be the same as this struct, this isomer here. So this is not considered a different isomer. It's a, the same molecule that we already drew. So let's go ahead and dry. Um, remember the strategy that I recommended is whenever you're trying to make a structural isomer, a good idea is to take a carbon off the end and move it somewhere in the middle of the chain. So I can't put it on either of these carbons because they already have um, full up bonds, um, if, especially if we're assuming that there's a hydrogen here. Um, and if I were to move it on this end carbon anyway, it would make the same as this molecule, the first molecule we drew. So I can move it instead to this position here. And so that would give us C triple bond, C carbon, like this. And um, this would be a structural isomer, and but this one would be a butyne, a butyne even. So this is one, two, three, four. This would be three methyl butyne. So um, this says uh, this links to a higher level section in structure 2.2. There are three isomers of dibromobenzene support the current model of benzene structure. So if we consider here, this is our bromine dibromine, dibromobenzene. Um, two bromines could be like this. Oops, that's a weird looking hexagon. I could have them with one carbon in between, or I could have them opposite to each other. And it says there's only three isomers. So that is a good supporting argument because we know that the electrons are evenly distributed around the ring. The six, those six pi electrons are free to move around, they're delocalized. If I were to have an actual alternating double bond structure instead, whether those, if the bromines are next to each other, if there's a single bound carbon, like a single bond in between, or a double bond in between, that, those would be different isomers at that point. And so you'd have a lot more than just three structural isomers. So by, by knowing that there's only three, that's a good supporting argument that those electrons are free to move around and the actual structure is somewhere in between those three resonance structures.